Hello and welcome to a new series of videos. In this series of videos I'm really going to be concentrating on what's required for the new OCR J277 syllabus. Now if you have watched my previous videos you'll understand that a lot of the materials covered at GCSE Computer Science uh, works across the different uh, curriculums whether that's OCR or Edexcel or AQA or whatever. But yeah, in this series, I am going to really be concentrating on what's required for that J277 syllabus from OCR. So we're going to start by looking at systems architecture. And the first part of this series is going to be on the architecture of the CPU. Here we have a screenshot of the syllabus for this unit. Uh, what we're going to do is go through every single part of this. But before we start, I just like to take a broad overview and think about what is a computer system in general. So what is a computer? Well, if you have a look at this diagram, you can see the key words here. We've got input, we've got process, we've got output, and we've also got storage. So a computer system is a programmable device that can input data process it into useful information and then output the information so that it can be used in some way. We do this through a combination of hardware and software. Hardware is tangible. It's the physical devices. It's the monitor, the CPU, the hard disk drive, that sort of thing. Software is the computer programs that we can write, the applications that provide the instruction that a computer follows. When we talk about input, we mean that data is entered into the computer using an input device. Now that can be a keyboard, a mouse, a touch screen, a microphone, a sensor. There has to be some way of getting data into the computer to be processed. Process just means that there are a series of software instructions that can be followed by the CPU to process that data. Well, that's very something very simple like adding two numbers together or something more complicated to do with kind of calculating 3D graphics or something like that. It's the same basic idea. And then we've got output. Once the data has been processed, the result needs to be output in some way so the user can see the results. So that can be on your screen. Uh, it can be printed. It could be sound that's coming through your speakers. It could be blinking LED lights. Just some way of getting that information back to the user. Now there's also a, uh, an extra kind of part of this sequence here. We're going to call it storage because data needs to be stored for later use. Once you've got a process, maybe you want to save it for later before you output it. Maybe you've got some input that you've already got stored that you want to use in a process. So then that's, we've got this kind of full diagram here. We've got the input, we've got the process, and we've got the output. But we've also got the idea of the program is providing that process. And maybe the results of that process might be saved and stored in some way. So all computer devices, from smartwatches to laptops to supercomputers, use this same basic model of a computer system. Again, this is a very broad overview, a very abstract overview of how a computer system works. We also like to classify things. People always love to divide things into different categories. So what we're going to do very briefly is just categorize all computer devices into two groups. The first we're going to call general purpose systems and the second we're going to call embedded systems. General purpose systems are your PCs, your laptops, your tablets, your smartphones, all the kind of computer devices that look and feel like computers. A general purpose computer can perform many varied tasks. They can run lots of different software applications. And it's the user that chooses the task for the computer to complete. An embedded system, however, doesn't really look like a traditional computer system. It is a computer system, a computer device, that has a dedicated function as part of a larger device. So the examples here are your smart television, your traffic lights, your washing machine or tumble dryer. It's the idea that, that they have computer chips in them, 
but they don't look and feel like computer systems in the same way that your desktop or your laptop do. So a coffee maker is an example of an embedded system. It might have a display panel, it might have some way of interacting with it, it's got little computer chips in it, but it's not really like a laptop. A laptop is a general purpose system. I can run lots of different applications, I can install new applications, I've got a lot more varied tasks that I can do here. So I will come back and I'll spend a whole lesson on embedded systems later on, but I just want to make that basic distinction clear just from the start. So let's summarize today's very basic, very quick lesson. All computer systems work in basically the same way at a simple level. Data is input, it is processed, and then it is output. We can divide computer devices into two basic categories. General purpose systems are computer devices that can perform multiple functions. And embedded systems are part of larger devices and perform only one specific function. Sorry, my voice is going just there, you see. I'm not used to talking very much into the microphone at the moment. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back very soon with the next in the series. We're going to get a bit more technical. Have a very pleasant day.